must have done been trying to take me out in 2019. I deserve to get my praise on you. I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to figure out how to work this deep thing because the message is deep and there's something that's not deep. Well. Because we ain't in nothing deep right now. We in a praise. Yes. Oh, God. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I've been in stuff deep all year long. I've been in deep in hell. I've been deep in depression. I've been deep in despair. I've been deep in trouble. right now because the devil told you you're not coming out of this you were so deep that your own mind told you you won't come out of this but you dared to make it to December the 1st 2019 God said you've been deep in it but I'm taking you out of it it's been bad but I'm going to renew your strength it looked like you were going over but I'm about to take you over This, 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 Woo. you made it this far, you made it, all right. Let me help you. Let me help you. I'm trying to give you all the illustrations that the Holy Ghost has given me. Let me help you. I, I used to run the mile. If you're on a regulation track, a mile is four laps. And sometimes on the third lap, your energy is spent the monkey is on your back and you feel like you can't make that last lap. But for some reason, once you enter the fourth lap, I don't know where it comes from, Deacon Joy, but once you enter the fourth lap, from out of nowhere, new strength comes. And I found out as long as I'm in the right position when I hit the fourth lap, I can win. As long as in the third lap I didn't get so far behind that it looks like it's impossible for me to catch up. But in that fourth lap, and I'll experience it out of nowhere, energy comes. I get a second burst. And since I know it's the fourth lap, I put everything I got into winning the race. I'm just here to let you know you're in your fourth lap. And when you didn't have energy in December, in November, new energy is coming in December. When it looks like you were going down in November, new energy and new strength is coming in December. And you're going to work this last lap. 
I'm going to get out of here. I didn't minister enough. I'm going to get out of here. I'm not going through all my dissertation. I'm going to hit these four points and I'll be out. And they're so short. I was going to talk about the origin, the journey from heaven to earth, how Jesus came. It didn't start in the manger. It started way back before the manger. But I just want to hit four points. And you can read it, Genesis 3, 14 and 15. Jesus, they're in the garden and the devil, not the devil, the serpent tricks the Eve and everything happens. But from that, I just got four points. And I'm getting out of here. Take my offering and take my leave. I just got four points because the first thing you got to understand is I want you to look at your neighbor and tell them this. God has a plan for your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, you're on the journey of life. When God has a plan for your life, you're on a journey. It's like taking a trip. So when God has a plan for your life, you take a trip. So God has a plan for your life. You're on the journey of life. Your, your destiny is your destination. Your purpose is where everywhere you stop at. Oh, God. And somebody needs you to stop because that's your purpose. So God has a plan for your life, and you're on a journey of life. But just like in the garden, the devil is going to do everything he can to stop the plan, or in other words, stop you from reaching your destination. That's point two. I'm halfway through now. That's, that's point two. I told you it was short. First, God has a plan for your life, too. The devil is trying to do everything he can to stop God's plan. God's plan in the garden was to create a paradise and then to grow them out of the garden. And then the devil, using the serpent, the devil wasn't the serpent. The devil used the serpent. Because <laughs> the Bible said the serpent was the cun most cunning creature he had ever created. But when you look at it in another translation, it says subtle, crafty, and deceitful. He was already evil. He ain't need no help from the devil. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some of your friends like that. They don't need no help from the devil. They already jacked up, and you need to leave them alone. But let me get to my four points. And so the devil the devil's going to do everything he can to stop you from reaching your destination. This is going to help you. This is going to help you because you're trying to figure out why is all this falling on me because you got somewhere you're trying to go, and the devil don't want you to get there. Have you ever started a trip and those of you got kids, you ever tried to go on a trip? And as soon as you try to go on a trip, it looks like everything, I got to go to the bathroom. I can't find my shoe. Did you pack? Oh, I forgot to pack this. It's like as soon, you didn't do none of that before. But as soon as we're about to walk out the door, everything break loose. That's how it is with the devil. As soon as God's trying to take you to somewhere you need to go, everything's breaking loose. Why? Because he's trying to stop you from reaching your destination. He's trying to stop you from reaching your destination. Can I hit you with point number three and I'm getting out of here? Sometimes, can I help y'all? Sometimes we aid the devil in stopping our journey. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we aid the devil in stopping our journey. How, Pastor? Because we allow wrong people in our lives and we listen to the wrong people like Eve did or we make dummy moves like Adam did. Did you hear me? We allow the wrong people in our lives and we listen to the wrong people and unknowingly we're aiding the devil and stopping us on our journey to life to go to our destination. And then sometimes we just make dummy moves like Adam did because Adam knew he wasn't supposed to eat of the tree, but he ate it anyway. And we help the devil stop us from getting to our destination. But can I hit point number four and be out of here? How you ever went on a trip and you had your GPS and you thought it said turn one way and you turned another way. And the GPS, once it realized you had turned the wrong way, it says rerouting. And it reroutes you and sometimes you get to your destination either the same time or even faster off of the reroute, even though you made the wrong turn. 
I'm just here to tell you today that sometimes you make a wrong turn and sometimes you mess up. But God said, I'll reroute you. And I'll reroute you so that sometimes you'll make it even there faster than you did before. Yeah, you made mistakes this year. Yeah, you messed up this year. But God said, I'll reroute it. And sometimes it's so messed up, it says rerouting, rerouting. Rerouting, rerouting. Yeah, God had you just re you still in a rerouting. But when it's settled, God said, I'm going to get you to your destination just like I said I would. Even if I got to reroute you all the way around this stuff because you made the mistake, I'm going to still reroute you. Notice the GPS doesn't say you're wrong. It just says rerouting. <laughs> and God says to so us, so, oh, I, I see, I knew you were going to make that wrong turn. That's why I'm rerouting you. I knew, I knew you were going to mess up. That's why I'm rerouting you. And then sometimes, can I help you with this? I'm going to get out of here. I promise you. Sometimes you're driving and your navigation said, I found a faster way. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me preach today. Uh, uh, sometimes it tells you I'm fine. What were you doing? I was just minding my business, and driving the way I'm supposed to drive, doing everything I'm supposed to do. And just because I was doing what I'm supposed to do, navigation said, we found a faster way. If you just do what you're supposed to do, I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> if you just do what you're supposed to do, God said, I'll find a faster way to get there. If you just trust me, if you just serve me, if you just pray, if you just read, if you don't find God said, I, I found, I found, I found, I found a faster way. And then God says, sometimes, sometimes, when you're in your navigation, navigation says, there's traffic ahead because there's been an accident. <laughs> Do you want me to take you around? <laughs> and sometimes God said, no, nah, I'm not going to take you that way because you're going to run into the wrong trouble. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to help me. <laughs> you, you're going to run into the wrong trouble. <laughs> and God said, I'm taking you around. And you don't understand why you're going around. And the biggest thing is, sometimes you've been on a route so, so long, when he takes you around, nothing looks familiar. And you ask yourself, am I going the right way? <laughs> and God said, if you just trust the navigation, if, you're just, if you trust the navigation to reroute, why are you going to get off the route where he reroutes you? And God said, just let me reroute you. I know it don't look familiar. I know it don't look like you're going the right direction, but if you just let me reroute you, when you get to the other side, you'll know where you're at. Y'all ain't going to help me. Yeah. And God said, untrust me enough to be in unfamiliar territory. Trust me enough to be in places you've never been before. Trust me enough so it don't look familiar, but you'll keep on listening to the navigation of the Holy Ghost, and you'll keep on trust me enough. Some of y'all trust your phones more than y'all trust God. You trust your phones more than you trust God. Your phone will take you through a neighborhood. Where we at? Well, the navigation said go this way. <laughs> I don't like the neighborhood, but it said go this way. So I'm just going to keep driving. And God takes you through some stuff. <laughs> and you like, God, I'm going to turn around. God said if you turn around, you'll mess up. Did you get that? If you turn around, you mess up. If you go back, you mess up. But if you just follow the navigation, I got you. That's all God's trying to tell you. I got you. I done seen every tear you shed. I got you. I done seen every valley you've been through. I got you. I done felt every pain that you've been through. God said, I'm not sympathizing with you. I've been there with you. When you felt it, see, it ain't like men, brothers. Your wife is pregnant, and she's going through labor. And you say, I'm here with you, but you ain't feeling no pain. Oh, I just got quiet on that. You, you, you ain't feeling it. See, it hurts, and you ain't, you, it's okay. Don't tell me it's okay, it hurts. Because I said, you can't tell me that. I'm not alone for the ride. I'm in this thing with you. And every pain you feel, I feel. Every tear you shed, I felt why you shed it. Can I give you a Bible verse? He said, we don't have, we have not a high priest who cannot be touched. Touched. Can I eat and it, analyze it, and temporize it? Who cannot be touched by what we're going through. In other words, when we go through it, he go through it. When you feel a loss, he feels a loss. Why is he able to comfort you the way he comforts you? Because he feels it with you and he wraps his arms around you because he knows what you're going through. He wraps his arms around you because he knows the pain you're feeling. He wraps his arms around you because he knows. 
he goes in this thing with you. And when the enemy is trying to take you out, and the enemy is trying to spoil the plan God has for your life, God says no problem. Can I close with this? We don't know the original plan of the garden in Adam and Eve. I do know one thing, in the cool of the evening, God would come and talk with Adam. I do know that the Bible said the grass was like meat. That's why the animals didn't attack anybody else, because when they ate the grass, they were satisfied. And I do know the devil stole that from us. And God says this, I just want to get my fellowship back. How am I going to do that? I'm going to have to go and send Jesus from heaven to earth for one reason. I want to meet you in the cool of the evening again. I just want to meet you. I can't meet you right now because sin keeps me from fellowshipping with you the way I want to. I got to send something that will blot out the sin so I can just have fellowship with you. He just want to meet you with some Kool-Aid and some chips and sit down while the wind is blowing and say, how was your day? He ain't going to help me today. I'm going to help him. He want the Lipton tea and you just sip it on it and just say, how was your day? My day was rough, God. That's all right. Put your feet up. It's going to be all right. That's all he wants. He wants the fellowship back. And he sends Jesus from heaven through 42 generations to a manger in Bethlehem to start the process of redemption from heaven to earth and he did it just so he could say put your feet up and chill out let's enjoy this evening together give God a praise right there I'm done I'm finished Y'all follow me. Would you follow me in this series? Would you meet me next Sunday and follow me in this series? Because some of y'all got some family members you wish you didn't have. So I want to look at Jesus' family. Yeah, some of y'all got some family members y'all wish you didn't have. I want to go through Jesus' lineage. Because the difference between Jesus and us, God chose his lineage. We couldn't choose our family. And I want to show you some people in his lineage that didn't have it going on, but God put them in there anyway. Would you join me in the rest of this series for the rest of this month from heaven to earth? I know we look at Medea's family, but can we look at Jesus' family?